useful and permissible in order to reopen. And so um, I'm just going to go through summarizing what the high, you know, again, giving a highlight reel of what uh, will be posted shortly. So, of course, you'll have the tremendous, you know, the traditional whereas recital clauses as to why we're doing this. And John very accurately um, summarized why we are doing this. Um, what we are doing is enacting this emergency ordinance, or assuming that the the select board decides to do so pursuant both to the charter under the emergency ordinance provisions and also under uh, chapter 14, which allows for uh, emergency management. And so what we are doing here is trying to relax those standards in order to allow outdoor business activities. And I'm just gonna read what the definition of that is. Um, so for the purposes of this ordinance, Outdoor business activities shall include outdoor sales areas, tent sales, outdoor seating for existing restaurants, seating for carryout establishments, outdoor meeting spaces for offices and exercise classes. Leah, um, can I, I'm sorry, I hate to interrupt you, but people are saying that the Facebook is down. Oh, I'll hold they, it. So they're not, people are saying the feed is gone. It's, it's back up. It's, okay. up. it's back right. up, I'm, yeah. It's back up, we're good. I just got a text from somebody saying Facebook was down. Sorry, yeah. Leah. I, yeah, I, no, thank you, I appreciate that. So, so bottom line is we were defining what outdoor business activities are, and they are the very things that you would think about are, you know, outdoor seating for restaurants, outdoor sales, sidewalk sales for local businesses, um, and outdoor meeting spaces, exercise classes. And so that is intended to be fairly broad. Um, the way to go about this is again because we're trying to make this user friendly and trying not to um, make this too difficult for local businesses and also not to burden um, overburden administrative uh, resources in order to make this request in order to do this what will be required is for folks to submit a written plan again it doesn't have to be fancy but a written plan to the town manager simply stating what the outdoor activity is and where on your property or parcel that activity is going to be or proposed to be conducted. And um, this is meant, I should be clear, this is meant to apply to existing businesses. And so um, that is also expansive to include those folks who have just gotten a building permit or you know, are in the middle of construction or have a pending or a just approved site plan approval. So it's not just existing, but we define that broadly. But it should be clear that the relaxation of the rules are only for those businesses that have the existing permits or pending permits to do so. Um, and what the various provisions of the town code that are going to be relaxed, generally speaking, are site plan approvals. Usually when you make these kinds of revisions, you have to come in for site plan approval that is going to be suspended. Um, again, if you're going to put up temporary structures like tents and awnings and temporary shelters, you would not need to get a building permit so long as whatever structure you're putting up complies with state fire marshal um, uh, regulations. So in, just in order to ensure safety. Um, other things that are going to be relaxed are the dimensional requirements or buffers or off street parking, light, glare, those kinds of uh, criteria that usually apply to an expansion of a land use, those would be relaxed. Um, sign provisions of the ordinance also relaxed. The only um, requirement being that, and, and, and you can look at the details yourself, there are certain minor details that need to be abided by. Again, this will give the town manager to authority to allow the display of goods and seating um, on sidewalks in conjunction with these kinds of outdoor activities, so long as those displays or uses are not um, creating hazards or safety, safety hazards to both pedestrians or vehicular traffic. Um, same kind of situation with streets. It will give the town manager authority to um, designate any public street or right of way to be available for the use of an existing business. Of course, those decisions would be made in conjunction with public safety to ensure that doing so does not create a hazard. 
Um, with respect to liquor licenses, uh, the restaurant owners out there may be aware that in order to expand to an outdoor operation, if you haven't already done so, requires Bablo approval. My understanding is, is that Bablo is now saying if there are municipal um, uh, uh, approvals of such activities, that they will not require additional um, approval from Bablo. So we've put a provision in this ordinance to recognize that. It includes some enforcement and penalty provisions if the provisions of this ordinance aren't met. And it states that the effective date will be consistent with the um, governor's order for this phase two, that it will be effective as of June 1st. So that's the, that's the bare bones, that's the skeleton, the skeleton of the ordinance. Entertain any questions if you'd like. Anyone have any questions? Well, this doesn't, yes, I do. I just, I just want to make sure this doesn't affect if people want to have a yard sale or something like that. That's just. The, the usual, there's already provisions in the ordinance for that. And that's okay, good. I just wanted to make sure that they don't think they have to have a, a special permit for that now. Okay. Nothing over and above what's already a, a required, but there are yard sale provisions in the town code. Oh yeah, yeah, yes. Right, right. Thank you. I, I just wanted to make comment that uh, in preparation for uh, this ordinance, uh, both the planner and code enforcement officer have been uh, calling all of the restaurants uh, in Wells to talk to them about this uh, pending uh, ordinance and to see if they needed uh, uh, some ideas uh, on what they wanted to do. Um, both have maybe a handful left to call, but uh, everyone's been excited and wanting to do something uh, to increase their uh, sales. Right. Um, no, I, um, I thank Leah for putting this together. I think it's great. Yep, thank you, Leah, and the uh, town folks for working on this. I know it was a long weekend. It reads very well. It's a little bit lengthy, but I think it covers everything. So thanks for the shortened version, and we'll be taking this up a little bit later. Okay. So you don't want the motion now? No, we'll take it up uh, a little bit later. Okay, perfect. Carl, uh, yep. uh, actually, John, can you, can we fix the way people, everybody's saying they can't hear you? John, did you get that? You're, you're not coming through very loudly. Uh, is there a way to increase the volume on when you're speaking? Uh, there's, I'm, I'm yeah, there's really not much we can do right now. They just, they really just need to turn their volume up on their speakers. Can you hear us any better now? A little bit, but you're going to have to speak very loudly, I think, for the to be able to hear. Hey, if someone just picks up the, the tripod and brings it right up to John, that'll fix it. John, you're going to be center stage. Come on, I'm getting too close. Closer. Yep. Yep. That's as far as we can go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. That's a little better. better. Barely, but better. So what I was saying is that with the pending ordinance, we tested the waters uh, by dividing up the uh, list of restaurants uh, and having the town planner, Mike Livingston, and um, our code enforcement officer, Jodine Adams, call as many of the restaurants as possible to, uh, uh, for tonight. And all of them have indicated their uh, willingness to work with the town and to uh, develop plans for additional sales uh, outside. And so they were appreciative. We have about a handful of uh, restaurants to go. And so uh, I think we'll be hitting the road quickly next week when this ordinance passes. Uh, we've also received some extended um, Bablo applications, which uh, 
are for restaurant outdoor sale of liquor, and we will be processing those also. Thank you. Possible so that uh, we'll schedule a public hearing to be speaking on this, but is it possible to put, uh, have Brittany put uh, this ordinance amendment on the page where people can look at it and digest it before we do the public hearing? Yes, it, it will go yeah. out to the website and to social media uh, tomorrow morning. Great. Thank you. John, next up, re, uh, re-establishing the Wells Lodging Committee. The other item that the Board of Selectmen asked uh, in the last couple of meetings, uh, in talking about short-term rentals and time of uh, use for seasonal lodging, um, it got to the point where it made some sense to look at doing these sorts of uh, analysis and recommendations by using our uh, lodging facility advisory committee that has not been activated for uh, a few years. And so uh, what we did was put together two additional charges of this committee and hopefully the board has that. Uh, what we have asked them to do besides look at the census of lodging facilities and wells um, and the review of lodging facilities regulatory history is to recommend uh, recommendations for handling short-term rental lodging facilities and changes recommended to current lodging regulations and what that would mean is time of year use and expansion of use time regulatory zoning and enforcement changes, examination of fees and development of lodging facility impact fees, uh, lodging facility ownership, management and licensing. So um, much of some of that was from uh, when the committee was there before, but uh, the two most important parts are looking at the uh, time of use that the board is uh, interested in, in making recommendations to a um, for a ballot question in November, but and to talk more about short-term rental um, regulations. So, with, with that said, um, and this is not set in concrete. The makeup of the committee would be a, a selectman member, a planning board member, a resident, uh, three residents, uh, and four lodging representatives. So we, we can change that format or, or anything uh, that meets the needs of the board of selectmen. I, I would add, personally, I would add a, somebody from the three season, you know, the, the groups that, what are they? management people from them. And I would add a, like a person that might just be a, a person that has a house that they do that, you know, Airbnb or somebody that's familiar with that kind of stuff to it, because I mean, that's who it's going to affect. I mean, you, maybe you just include them in the citizen part, but. Well, I, I had included them in the one of the, we have four lodging representatives. Yeah. Right. Seasonal units, three season cottages with the lodging uh, representative. Any other questions or comments from the board? So this, I just, so under the four lodging industry representatives, it would be a three season person, a hotel, hotel person, an Airbnb, and what, a campground? That's not campground though. It could be. Okay, Cam Crown. Those will be the four representatives from the lodging industry. That's what you're thinking and that could happen, yes. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. I've already had several people reach out to me on this. Um, so if, if we're moving forward with this, John, would the application for this committee go live in, in July or sometime around then? Yeah, late June. Okay. Right, because they report back in August, so, right? 
Yeah. Okay. Those, those people that are interested should uh, contact Town Hall and submit an application of interest. Yep. Perfect. Who, who's the selectman that's already on the lodging committee praying that it's not me? That would be me. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Who, who volunteered? Sean. Sean. Well, he's already on it. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get a planning board member and uh, look for residents, uh, volunteers. Very good. Great. Moving on then to COVID-19 update, a continued discussion of federal and state uh, COVID-19 policies. John? The, um, the governor, um, I'll roll this all together, um, but the state of Maine has uh, been able to increase their testing uh, for COVID uh, dramatically uh, through their uh, connections with IDEC. And uh, we, we see that growing each week and it will be possibly a solution for the quarantine issue uh, that continue to uh, create problems and um, questions in the minds of everyone. That, uh, and what we tried to do um, over the weekend through our town attorney, Leah, was to actually try to talk with Commissioner Johnson of uh, the Department of Economic and Community Development. Um, we got halfway there. Uh, she was able to ask a couple questions which uh, the, the commissioner answered. But when we asked for a telephone uh, conference, um, she at first said yes, but never got back to us. Um, that, that was a problem. Uh, the quarantine issue is very much up in the air. Um, it's difficult to understand how people uh, from away can understand the rules and regulations that are under the governor's orders. And a day doesn't go by, it has decreased dramatically, but questions are asked of the town thinking that we know what the governor is doing. And we, we try to answer all those questions. Uh, today, for example, um, the governor through her commissioner opened up the campgrounds and the, uh, RV parks for Maine residents only on Friday going forward. And then on June 1st, for uh, both Maine residents and out-of-state out people. But out-of-state people will have to still quarantine for 14 days. And so that issue is going to uh, continually be with us uh, through phase two and phase three. Uh, and we'll, we'll have to deal with it, and hopefully she'll deal with it. Um, the other uh, concern we have is she, she being the governor, issued an order uh, last week uh, that was to clarify when people were to get their uh, excise uh, vehicles uh, re-registered by a certain date. And so what she set was 30 days from May 14th. If your car is unregistered at this time or needs to be registered, it needs to be in compliance with the governor's order 30 days from May 14th. Now that puts an incredible burden on us as a town trying to uh, comply with, with uh, everything she, she is requesting. As I reported last week, uh, our 
finance director has indicated through the month of May, through from February to May, we have 4,500 vehicles that need to be re-registered in some way. And we have uh, done our best to promote the online registration program, which she indicates in her order as a mechanism to use. But also, we have opened up town hall um, Monday through a fairly uh, uh, rigorous uh, process of uh, uh, having people uh, through appointments uh, come in and do their re-registrations. And in a minute, we'll, we'll get into that. But um, her order, I hope, will be uh, amended or um, and we've talked to the Maine Municipal Association about this, the area uh, town managers, that this, this is a burden um, that we will uh, try, try to comply with, but may not achieve um, in the time frame that she, she has set. Uh, going next to uh, what, what I was just referring to, we had a reorientation of our staff, our employees, uh, last Friday. Dr. Uh, DiCapua came in and did a very nice presentation uh, to our employees. Uh, it was out in the parking lot of Town Hall. Um, we had a lot of questions of, uh, of uh, Sam, uh, which were answered. We then went through our uh, COVID-19 uh, procedures and regulations for opening up Town Hall and the other facilities in the community. We um, opened on Monday uh, through the efforts of uh, uh, lifeguards that were the greeters. We, we, we have a tent out back where it's a staging area for people who have made appointments uh, to come and wait. The lifeguards uh, check them in, uh, take their temperature, ask them some questions, and then bring them inside uh, to where they're going. Um, so far this week, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jody, but um, it, it has worked very well uh, so far, the two days that we've been open. <laughs> um, that's correct. So yesterday we went live with customers into town hall um, in the finance and tax collection office. We actually had every appointment filled um, for both days. We're filled for tomorrow. Um, and I ran some quick reports. The town hall has 215 appointments booked for this week so far. Um, and the finance office is at 100% on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We're currently at 71% on Thursday and 60% on Friday. And those numbers were changing as I was running the report. So um, taxpayers can book online if you go to our webpage, wealthtown.org. And halfway down, there's a button that says schedule appointment. And you go in and you just book your appointment. Some of the quick issues we're having is in the registration office we can only have two clients in at a time and if a husband and wife have to be on the transaction they actually need to book two spots because they have to reserve those two spots um, we have had um, residents that have been working with us if we can have them in the office we do um, my staff is sometimes going out to the parking lot to get a signature or things like that so um, uh, staff and all the residents that we've dealt with have been very helpful in this situation and their understanding. We're doing the best that we can do. Um, I would encourage, we are encouraged people to do online re-registration. Those that can't, we can actually offer you re-registration with no contact if you're willing to call the office and we do the registration over the phone. We tell you the amount of payment that you need to get to us. Most of our residents are dropping the payment in the Dropbox. 
they're either providing us a copy of their insurance or having their insurance faxed it to us. When we get the insurance and the payment, we're mailing the registration to them. So that is another method as not to have to come into town hall. The drop box that she is referencing is directly in the parking lot by the middle door. And uh, it's used for everything from what Jody was saying, but also for code enforcement and planning and town clerk materials. Um, just drop it in there. We check it out uh, several times during the day. And um, it, it's been um, very used, very heavily used. So our procedures, our plan appears to be working. Uh, we're doing the best we can with the amount of space we have and the uh, regulations to be safe. Um, we, we have protected PPE uh, stuff that we uh, adhere to. And, and so it does, uh, it is a challenge, but we're uh, up to that challenge right now. Good job. Great. The, the next item are the beaches. Um, the beaches opened uh, on May, May 11th. Um, we had a fairly quiet week. Uh, it got uh, a little busy on the weekend. We were sure that this coming weekend, Memorial Day weekend, just think we're at Memorial Day already, uh, is going to be uh, very nice weather and I'm sure there'll be a lot of people up. Uh, what we will be instituting, unless I hear different, are the parking committee, traffic committee's recommendations for sizing the amount of cars in the parking lot. So like at the gross lot, 146 cars, uh, at the jetty lot, 95 cars, uh, et cetera. Uh, so we'll be doing that. Uh, we will be, uh, we have worked this week uh, extensively with the inland fisheries and wildlife to work uh, a way around some of the right of ways that are, are uh, closed. Um, the entrance way will remain closed until the birds hatch. Once they're hatched in, uh, in another couple of weeks, uh, the birds will move and we can uh, reopen that access point. Uh, so midway through June, I, I would say that we could do that. Uh, we'll be opening up um, hopefully right away 14. Uh, the end of this week um, and, and so I think we've made some progress there. Quick question or at least a thought. I, I, I said it originally and I just wanted to reiterate I really seriously disagree with banning sitting on the beach. I think it's a, a foolish provision. I think um, the whole theme that we need to pay attention to is social distancing. And in terms of the beach, I don't, I don't think it matters if someone's cartwheeling, sitting, fishing, walking, running, doing whatever, as long as they're taking the CDC guidelines seriously. So I just think it's adding one more layer of enforcement we don't need. I agree. Uh, because we, uh, can I have a, can I have a legal question? Because we already voted, are you there? Can you hear me? Am I on? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can hear. Okay, um, I don't know. Um, um, because we voted, you know, the thing, fishing, surfing, swimming, and walking. Fishing, surfing, swimming, and walking, yeah. Um, and we specifically left off, I mean, sitting. Normally, you wouldn't have to say all that because the beach is open. Um, but if we wanted to say that people could sit on the beach, do we have to actually now say that we include sitting on the beach? Is that directed to me, Kathy? Yes, it is. I'm sorry, Leah. No, I'm just making sure. Um, I think that if there was a formal motion made and adopted at the last meeting, which I believe there was, I think mm -hmm. we should probably amend that, um, if nothing more than to clarify what the intention is and therefore any enforcement that needs to be done. We're not okay. done. Case may be. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So I'd like, can, I, can I make a motion? I'm, well, I'm going to wait. Anyway. And I'll second that. Thank you. 
to, to open it up to the normal use of the beach that we would normally have under regular circumstances prior to COVID. Effective tonight? Yes, immediately. Effective immediately, thank you. Discussion or thoughts, Tim? No, I don't, I'm, I'm not against it in any way. A couple of questions, not, are the lifeguards on this weekend? When do the lifeguards start, just so what people understand that? And when do bathrooms open up? And bathrooms, I mean, when you're sitting, that's gonna be an issue, so all those things, are the trash cans out? These are things that you have to add to it right away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you're gonna have sitting, we better have trash cans, you better have bathrooms open, we better have these things ready. Because they're oh. gonna be down there longer than just going for a walk. We, we weren't going to open up the bathrooms because of the issues of uh, COVID, but we have porta johns down at each uh, location. Okay, good. Trash cans? Did, we, did I hear that? Trash cans are back. Um, I don't know if Carol's on this or not, but uh, they should be back. Yeah, yeah. okay. And the lifeguards, uh, Chief, are uh, walking? Yes, they are. They're going to be starting this weekend. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? But it, it, just a couple, just because I want to understand. I'm Like I said, I'll probably vote yes. But um, if we're going to be the only beach from Boston to Booth Bay, the Bar Harbor, that's going to have sitting. Who's going to talk about the social distance? Are we just saying we're just saying we're trusting you like we do everything else? Because we, we love to talk about enforcement all the time. So we'll have no enforcement of this, right? And with an 80 degree day on Friday. I'll probably be swimming. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm just asking what are the lifeguards being told that they have to? Because I, I feel bad for an 18 year old kid. You know what I mean? Or are we going to have, I mean, I'm just asking. A part of the reason that we we didn't have sitting was we were we were concerned about the the group gatherings of ten or more people, and having left that off of the original vote, that gave the Joanne and her staff the opportunity to enforce it because it wasn't allowed. If you open it up, it's going to be very difficult to enforce. Although Lee and I have spoken. It's not about whether we're going to enforce or not. We have the ability to enforce. It's a question of whether we have uh, the possibility to, to do anything at this point, if you open it up to that. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I think people will have to give a, you know, I think people need to take responsibility for their own actions. But sometimes you just forget when you're just walking and you're with somebody. And I don't have any problem with this. I would say just a friendly reminder, you know, you know, um, but no, just remind people. But I, if they happen to see it, but I don't think that um, we have, you know, I'm just saying that we have to depend on people to be grown ups about it. They're adults. And if they have, if they're adults that have children, they're adults that have children, you know, and watch them. So, I mean, gosh, we can't be everybody's nanny state. Well, I, I understand the sentiment behind it. Don't get me wrong and the concern, but you know, like, like Kathy said, at some point, I think everybody's well aware of what they need to do at this point. I don't believe personally that we're going to have this this huge problem. But my serious concern with this is we do have folks with mobility issues, even if they don't have mobility issues. Like I said, I just want to make sure that we're we're putting provisions in place that make sense. And the whole theme of the thing is we need to maintain social distancing. And I just have a hard time wrapping my head around, okay, so we can tell somebody they can't sit on the beach and they're going to social distance as a result of that, as opposed to, okay, you can sit on the beach. We still need you to social distance. If you're gathering in groups, just you're going down to kick people off the beach anyway. If they're sitting, go down and tell them that they can't be in, in the groups because that's the problem. So for me, it's just addressing the actual problem. It's not creating another one where there, there shouldn't be one hypothetically. Well, for all intents and purposes, I don't believe you're gonna see very many people wearing masks on the beach. And no. you're gonna be sitting, you know, if somebody doesn't follow the rules, there's always, people's right. safety and the health and well-being. Right. Can, can I just add, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, Karen. The, the police chief wanted to make a comment. Go ahead, go. Okay. 
<laughs> the only thing I would say, I wouldn't put any of this burden on the lifeguards. Not their job. It's no. Job. My people are not out this week. I have a very skeleton crew. We're, we're not even up. We're still training our people. We don't even, usually the third week in June before we're out there. Um, and the, the only thing that I'll say, and I don't care one way or the other, I really don't, but I'm trying to minimize contact with my police officers and any, any other town employee with people, period. I don't care if you're from Maine, Massachusetts, or where you're from. It's, it's my job to protect my employees. And that's what I'm trying to do. And that's why, that's the only issue I have with it, is that it, it could, I mean, how do we know you got a gathering of, of a bunch of people down there and we get down, it's all family. Is that okay? What, what's the answer to that question? Can I just say something then? Can I? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Look, I mean, everybody wants to be comfortable. Everybody wants to be safe and everybody wants to do no harm to others. But if you're, and if you're down there and you see people that are, that are together or whatever, keep away from them. You know, gosh, you know, you don't have to walk right up on top of somebody if they're not wearing a mask and you're not comfortable with it. Walk around them. I mean, it's, it's two way street here. Other thoughts or comments? Do, I, I do, I have, one, I have a comment. Uh, it's gonna be a question to Leah, just cause this has been coming up all over the United States uh, about when you open things. With the fact that there, when, you, let's just, I'll give an example. If you could park in the casino square parking lot, you walk down the steps, you use the railing, Somehow they proved that the railing got affected with COVID. Now 10 people from Wells that went to Wells Beach. Who's, is that our liability? Because I, we opened the beach? I think we have the benefit of the Maine Tort Claims Act. Um, okay. Various exceptions. And then of course there are exceptions to the exceptions. So that's kind of a difficult question. But what I would say is that, you know, um, we take whatever precautions we can and, and do whatever we can, but Obviously, in a pandemic situation, there's certainly a, I would argue, a voluntary assumption of risk. Um, you know. But, right. You, oh, let me just finish that. I mean, but as we, whether or not ultimately legally somebody who would sue the town would prevail, that doesn't mean they're not going to sue them in the first place and that we have, you know, the cost of defense and, and, and those sorts of things to be thinking about. And I would also like to remind people, if they're fearful of that and they have to use the railing, wear gloves. And, um, and if you- I'm not, I'm not arguing that. I'm just trying to, I want to make sure we have all the information. I'm not arguing whether somebody should use the railing or not use the railing. I'm just asking every question that should be asked. And, and Tim, I mean, to that point, you know, we, it, it, the restrooms, you know, that's an issue. And, and you do want to be concerned and make sure the cleaning protocols are used. And, and I know there are all sorts of recommendations in that regard. So, um, like I said, like the Main Tort, Tort Claims Act, which does provide rather extensive immunity, but there are exceptions to that. And so we want to make sure that, you know, cleaning protocols and those kinds of things are, are looked after. I'm a little nervous opening up right before a, a big holiday weekend, um, especially with, I mean, we can all say that people are gonna, you know, honor, honor code for all of this, but we all know people aren't following any of the honor codes. It's, it's kind of just how it's been going. I mean, we've all seen it. So I, I, I'm a bit hesitant, I am, so. I, for next Tuesday? I would prefer that. I'd like to see how the holiday weekend goes before we do anything. That's just my opinion. I'd love to open up the beach. I lived on the beach. I was there every day in the summer. I'm very hesitant. I think there's a lot of residents right now that are very hesitant about this. I'd like to see us wait until after Memorial Day weekend. That's just personally. And I, I'll echo that sentiment. You know, we opened the beaches so that people could walk. We're, we're concerned about social distancing. You know, we jumped a gun when we were dealing with uh, towns from, from Rye, New Hampshire, all the way up and down the coast. We opened our beaches up. If we're the only beach that's going to allow people to sit on it, uh, I do have a concern about that. And I think uh, we're being a little bit aggressive because my concern is not the beginning of the summer. It's worrying about a spike and, and what the governor might do towards the end of summer. And 
to, to open the beaches for this weekend. I, I think when we haven't opened the hotels and whatnot, uh, we, we, we could be asking for some difficulties. So I, I would recommend that we push this off and talk about it maybe next Tuesday night. I just think it's- um, yeah, I'd like to vote on it though. Yeah, we can vote. Thank one, you. One, one thing, I, uh, Kathy, as I, I'm, I'm with you, but I would, um, I would probably be in favor for after the holiday weekend, voting on it now and setting a date for after the holiday weekend. I would absolutely vote tonight yes. for after the holiday weekend. I yes, would vote. Yes, yes, that'll for give, that. for me, what that'll do is allow us to communicate with the other towns. So do you want to amend the motion or do you want to, do you want to vote to, on opening it now? No, we'll vote this motion and then we'll vote to opening it after Tuesday. But I'm, I'm on the, I want it on the record that I think it's perfectly fine. People have to be responsible for themselves. This is just one more thing that we really should open up. There's broad spaces. I was down there all week and it's wide open. Yes, it wasn't 80 degrees, but if people want to go this weekend and out of staters can't come here, it's going to be residents that are here. Well, if there's no other comments, I have a motion and a second to open the beaches effect tomorrow. All in favor? Aye. No. No. Opposed? That would be three no and two yes. So. Okay, now you want a motion to make it uh, happen on Tuesday? If that's your desire. I make a motion that we um, open the beaches on Tuesday for all, all recreation. Second. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero for next Tuesday. Thank you. Anything else, John, under your report? Um, I was going to report on on the uh, work we're doing with the different towns uh, on the coast, from uh, Massachusetts on up to uh, Scarborough. And um, as we were just saying, everybody's in the same uh, situation of, uh, in Maine anyway, of walking, uh, surfing, what we just talked about. Uh, Governor Sununu in New Hampshire has decided to keep the beaches closed. Uh, he's getting a lot of pressure um, and most likely it will happen sometime in June uh, down in New Hampshire. Uh, Massachusetts up in the uh, North Shore, uh, they're uh, slowly opening up uh, to something like uh, the status we are. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. We, uh, we have a, a, a other update for the We Are Wells funds. I had a few people that said they're having difficulty finding it. Could you know how to get on the website and where it is so that they can donate to the We Are Wells fund? Yes. We can repost it to Facebook. It was posted last week, but um, I'll post it and pin it to the top of the page so it's clear for everyone um, how to donate and how to access the link. Great, thank you. Senior Needs Committee of Wells and Algonquin, an application for a blanket letter of approval to operate the game of chance. This is a renewal. Any questions or comments? Take a motion. I make a motion that we accept the approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. I have to abstain. Yeah, 401, thank you. Next, we have the Senior Needs Committee of Wells and Algonquin application for Bino Bingo from June through October 2020. I'm moved to authorize and sign the application for Bino Bingo for Senior Needs Committee of Wells and Algonquin. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I abstain. Aye. Yep, 401, thank you. We're on to the news, John. Uh, good news, we have uh, several letters that I won't uh, try to read, but they are identifying um, the WIM transport service uh, for uh, a couple of different occasions, and they just want to um, uh, definitely make everyone aware that uh, WIM's did a great job in, in caring for uh, their loved ones. Um, and so, that's it. 
All right, thank you. While you're talking about that, uh, Jim Lapola from Jim. Did you talk about, uh, I know last week we talked about uh, people not calling in because they were fearful that did, uh, after speaking last week, did you see an improvement of, uh, of calls? No, not really. Um, people are still, people are still calling in. They're Great, thank you. We had another letter, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, appreciated the uh, hand holding that the uh, front office did in getting a car registration done through the mail for them. Great. Moving on to open to the public. Uh, we will leave this open for about 15 minutes to take uh, any and all questions. Brittany, are you queued up? Yep. Um, lots of questions on the 14 day quarantine. Is it the 14 day quarantine or just the length of stay that you're in the state? If you if you come in from New Hampshire into Maine through Massachusetts or, or anything like that, it is a and you're staying in the state of Maine, it is a uh, up to 14 days. If your stay is five days, if you're still quarantined for five days. If you're coming up to open up your house that you have not a lodging unit or something, it is 14 days inside the house. Bring your uh, groceries, bring everything you need. Um, as I said before, stop in Portsmouth at the Rotary. Uh, stop at Market Basket, stop at Trader Joe's, and make sure you got provisions for 14 days, and and you're you're there on your property. I've uh, it's somewhat related, not really a question, but I just I feel like it's a good time to bring this up. I'd like to see um, the board draft a letter to send to the governor uh, recommending a change to our 14 day quarantine if if it's going to remain on there that the 14, I would like to recommend that we have a 14 day quarantine, but if it, that um, they can do in their home state, and if there's no contact or stopping from their home state to their residence or wherever they're staying up here, that that should count towards their 14 days of the quarantine. But I just think it, it's illogical to say that when you cross the main state border, it's some magical line where you have then, you know, cross contaminated or something like that. I think if you've quarantined and you have not stopped, on your way up to your, your place of residence while you're here, I think that should be, um, you know, amendment to her ordinance if it's going to remain in there. Yeah, I, I agree. See, especially if it's coming from a state where they've been, so if, in other words, you know, if you're a hotel or a motel or a lodging unit, who's coming into your place and where they're from, because you get all that information ahead of time. So if they're coming from Massachusetts, if they're coming from New Hampshire, if they're coming, a place that's already had this in place, why are we re, make them redo their 14 days when they get here if they haven't even stopped like if they're just coming up i i mean it's nothing that we can do as a selectman except to send a letter saying hey can you consider this to the to the governor that you know this 14 day quarantine if they've already been doing it in their own state like a lot of the people that's uh, that are staying in these campgrounds like in in those um i'm sorry i don't know the names i've never done this but uh the units that are permanent and what are they called? Somebody help me here. <laughs> you know, a camper, a camper that sits there and they're coming up for the whole summer. Those people are elderly. They've been sitting in their home in Massachusetts, or not even if they're elderly. They've been sitting in their home in Massachusetts for, for six weeks, and they come up here and have to spend another four weeks, uh, 14 days quarantine. I, I would hope that we, you know, the governor would consider that being already quarantined. I, you know, I just think if, if they're coming from a state that already has this, why they have to redo it? when they get here, I'm not sure, but there's nothing, I, I agree with Sean, there's, but I, I just like to see us write a, a note to her or something to say, can you think of it this way rather than the 14 day? 
Because they say they're trying to figure out a different way to do the 14-day quarantine. I, I see it all the time in their reports, but a park model, I guess somebody just put, if they're staying in a park model. I mean, she's already stated she's going to revise. We've heard that she's most likely going to revise her 14-day quarantine shoot soon. So, I mean, maybe it's meaningless, but... Um, next question. Can you clarify whether or not main residents coming in from out of state have to quarantine or not? Yes, they do. Under the governor's orders, they would. Um, if the snowbirds from Florida, Arizona come through, they have to uh, do what I just made reference to. Um, next question, who is monitoring and enforcing the 14-day quarantine rule? There are no quarantine police. Um, it, we, we talked about this for every, every week we've been here. It's up to you, uh, the individual coming into Maine, uh, to do that. John, I mean, if they're asking who is authorized to do so, under the governor's orders, it's very clear that it's um, through means of community policing and, it, you know, any governmental department or official that regulates licensors or permits or law enforcement, everybody is authorized to enforce. Next question, is there a task force set up to monitor COVID-19 and the 14-day quarantine? In Maine, yes. In, in Maine, you have the governor and the Maine CDC. Um, and in the towns, you don't have that. You have the emergency uh, management uh, service, e EMS, and um, EMA, and EMS, and public safety. Next question, if you own a park model in an RV but are unable to quarantine due to being an essential worker in another state, should there be some allowance in seasonal park fees? That's, that's really up to the campground. I, um, that has nothing, I don't think, to do with uh, the state order. Um, next question, are we able to go to our seasonal campground this weekend as opposed to June 1st? If you are a Maine resident, you can do that. If you're from out of state, you cannot until June 1st. Next question, is it legal for more than 10 people to gather in a restaurant parking lot to eat takeout when there is no established outside dining rule yet? It's, it's still advised if the restaurant does not have some social distancing uh, regulation built into their facility to have more than 10 people gather closer than six feet uh, in, in a crowd. I, I see this uh, every night when I go home in Kittery for the Dairy Queen. Uh, there are huge crowds out there. Uh, getting on the circle there. And, you know, there isn't anything you can do other than if, if you're aware of the, the virus, you need to be six feet apart. You need to be wearing a mask. And those are safety protocols uh, right now. Um, otherwise, you take your chances. Um, next question, does the, does the Town of Wells plan on doing testing and contact tracing? No, um, we, we are not in that business. Um, she, she being the governor, will have to set up a protocol for testing um, and how that is to take place. Um, a few questions coming in about those who are quarantining at their home, can they do um, yard work? Can they sit outside? Uh, or do they have to stay inside their home? Got a few questions on that. They can stay on their property. 
whether that's inside, outside. Um, they can recreate on their property, um, but they cannot have contact with with the other public that's in in and around uh, where they live. Um, next question here: When will restaurants have outdoor seating and be allowed outdoor dining? Uh, as of June first. Next question here, we own a seasonal cottage at Watercrest and have received a statement from the water supplier for annual cubic usage and water turn on fee. Is water being turned on right now? I can't speak to Watercrest, but water is being turned on by the water district and you can call the water district, which is not part of the town of Wells, it's a separate utility. Next question, can I renew my business license online? No, no you cannot. Uh, you can request an application, we'll send that to you and you just mail it back in. Next question here, are campers who own Park Models residents? No. Um, Moving on to some questions about the beaches. Will there be someone to help monitor crowds like they are doing in a gunglet? I assume when we open up for sitting or this weekend. I'm not sure what a gunglet is doing uh, to safeguard social distancing at the beach. I think there, this question and there was another one is, will we be doing crowd control to enforce social distancing when the beach is opened up for sitting and this weekend when we expect an influx of people? We're, we're going to do what we can to remind people uh, of their um, responsibilities under this uh, set of uh, circumstances. And I, you know, obviously, when you're on the beach, you're trying to relax and recreate. Uh, but it's impo important that uh, we keep our distance. And that, that is difficult on some of our beaches when the tide comes in and we all are moved up to the seawall. Um, it, it, it's going to be a challenge to um, keep our social distances. Now, we'll have to play it by ear. I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, question on the amendment to allow sitting next to me. I know you mentioned recreation or questions on what specifically means. You can play games on the beach, you know, toss a football, question on what that actually means. When, when we open up, all of the regulations that we have in place will be uh, enforced. Um, we have challenges on Wells Beach with the pike and plover in some sections. So there are regulations there of no, no ball playing, no volleyball playing, no, uh, uh, if you dig holes in the sand, you have to fill them in be before you leave. Um, those sorts of things will be uh, reviewed. Um, um, will this amendment be reconsidered? What amendment? To allow sitting on the beach, or is that final? Well, it, it's, uh, the vote is for March 20, May 26th to be open uh, for all activities. Um, next question on lifeguards. What are the hours of the lifeguards? The main sign says five o'clock, um, but the beach is still very busy at four o'clock. Question on that. Fire chief, you want to take that? Right now, they're just going to be working, uh, doing walks on the beach starting on the weekends only. And that's going to be, um, I believe that's until four or five o'clock. So it's just right now, they're just doing walks starting this weekend and on the weekends until 
uh, the middle of June. Excuse me, until um, 4th of July. Does that answer your question? I will let you know. Um, lots of questions still on quarantine, what you can do and what you can't do. I know we've talked about this, but perhaps we could reiterate that. Some certain questions we're getting are whether or not people can get takeout or um, again, leave their house to go for a walk with a mask on, really just redefining that. There's still a lot of confusion. What I tell people, I must have answered this about 500 times in the last two weeks. On the main CDC website, under COVID-19, there is a section called Frequently Asked Questions. So in that, the CDC commissioner has put down what you can and cannot do under uh, quarantine. And I would urge everyone to read it. I'm not the one making this up. Um, it's very rigid. You have to stay within your property or lodging facility. Um, next question, what's the procedure to get an exception to move into Meadow Ledge prior to June 1st? There is under the law, if you um, have certain conditions and so forth, um, you may qualify for that. Um, I would need to know what exactly that is to be able to tell you for sure. Case by case. All right, Brittany, um, our question, and we'll get back to these again later. Okay. Do you have one more that uh, oh, you want to? Sorry, talk? yes. Um, question, how will we keep the bathrooms clean at the beaches? For right now, we are uh, using Porta Johns, and obviously we're relying on a company to clean them um, as frequently as we can. When we open up the uh, restrooms, we have a contractor that will be cleaning the restrooms. We'll be um, cleaning it to with a, a chemical spray. And um, we, we can't be there around the clock. We hope to get it twice a day. But the, the amount of use those restrooms get, I, I think we'll do our best uh, on that. Great. Thanks, Brittany. If you can uh, coordinate and consolidate some more questions, we'll get back to in a few minutes. Thank you. Moving on to current agenda items, the first being review and action on accounts payable and payroll warrants. John. We have two warrants this evening. Uh, the first one is Treasurer's Warrant dated May 19, 2020. Uh, the warrant is $392,248.33. We have a school payment of $1,683,283.58. We have two pay periods since we uh, last uh, did warrants. The first pay period net $77,123.35. The second pay period did May 14, 2020, net $93,741.75. The withholding uh, for those two periods, $85,534.66. Total expense, $2,331,931.67. Any questions on the warrant? I move to approve and sign the warrant dated May 19, 2020 in the amount of $2,331,931.67. Okay, Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero, thank you. Next slide is up. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, the second warrant tonight is a, a uh, special warrant. Of, it's uh, $625 that came out of We Are Wells Fund. 
I move to approve and sign the warrant dated May 19th, 2020 in the amount of $625. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 5-0 again, thank you. Next we have update discussion and action on committee's projects, issues, purchases, and personnel. Uh, Jen. We have the first, I'm sorry, is a presentation and discussion and action on signing, signing the fire substation contract with TP construction of Sanford, Maine. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, I believe uh, Stephen Dumont is on from TBC. Um, I thought I saw him before. And Ron Lamar, our architect, is also on. And with our fire chief, we've been working um, over the last couple of weeks to um, bring the cost down from uh, the bid that Steve's firm provided of uh, 1265000 down to $1.2 which was the target that we were uh, shooting for. And Steve did the brunt of the work, and he became very creative in, in what he was doing. And so I'm going to turn it over to Steve. Um, to talk about those uh, en valued engineering points that brought us down at 1.2. Thanks, John. So we, the following items were value engineered from the project. And at any time, if you want to stop me to ask questions, please do so. The original plans called for granite curbing along Route 9 and into the entrance. So we eliminated the granite curbing and uh, that also helped with the uh, snow plowing in the entranceway as well. But uh, all the work in the Route 9 was eliminated. We also, for the pavement section, it called for a heavy duty pavement section in the parking in the roadway. The gravels stayed the same, but uh, what we did do was we reduced the pavement from five inches to four inches in depth. There was also a concrete apron in front of the apparatus bay garage doors. And in lieu of the concrete apron, we just continued the heavy duty asphalt pavement up to the garage doors. We also deleted the uh, waterproofing around the the frost wall, the damp proofing, waterproofing, not um, absolutely necessary due to the frost wall construction. We uh, deleted the rigid insulation around, I'm sorry, we deleted the rigid insulation underneath the slab, but we have rigid insulation around the perimeter of the foundation. We deleted the red slash green traffic lights at the overhead doors. The exterior doors will be provided by the pre-engineered metal building manufacturer with standard commercial hardware. And the interior doors will be solid wood doors with hollow metal knockdown frames and standard commercial hardware. The there was uh, two interior elevations that were called to be a, an aluminum storefront with gl glazing. And uh, what we did was we um, will we'll su we'll supply drywall partition walls with um, solid wood doors and hollow metal frames. The, the exterior personnel doors and windows will all be the color dark bronze. The interior storefront elevations, um, I'm sorry, I already spoke about that one. There was uh, a couple of wet walls, one in each bathroom and one in the decon room that was gonna be a ceramic wall tile and we're using FRP in its place. The Two showers, there was a shower for each bathroom that had uh, solid surface uh, walls and base and we're providing acrylic showers instead. 
we deleted the kitchen sink grease trap. Um, we have an alternate floor covering in the office areas. We deleted one exterior door and we deleted the chain link fencing, fencing within the apparatus bay. It was just to create a small storage area in the apparatus bay. We added an expandable mainframe to the building, which means that the fire station could be expanded in the future and add an additional bay if uh, chosen to. We also added um, a combination lock set at two of the exterior doors so that a key is not required, just a simple uh, code. And we also increased the collateral load of the building, which allows for future solar panels, roof mounted solar panels. So those were the changes to the original plans. Does anyone have any questions in regard to that? What was the total deduction that you came up with with all those uh, changes? Uh, between the changes and then a few of the ads, it was $60,000. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? No. If no other questions, I'll take Kathy and take a motion. I move to award the construction of the fire substation to TPD construction of Sanford, Maine and the amount of $1,200,000 and authorize the town manager to sign the AIA contract with TPD to construct the fire substation. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen and Ron and uh, Chief for getting that down into a budget uh, 1.2. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Our next item is discussion and action on scheduling a public hearing to enact the emergency ordinance titled Emergency Ordinance to Temporary Relax Various Licensing Venue Sidewalk Parking and Traffic Standards Contained in the Town of Wells Code of Wells assist businesses suffering from economic loss as a result of COVID-19 in a manner consistent with the governor's executive orders and reopening plan. Any further discussion on this or questions after Leah gave a summation earlier? No, I'm excited for it. No, I think it's, I think it's great. Mr. Chairman, I, I would ask that you, uh, when you make the motion, uh, to have me sign the hearing, um, public hearing notice on your behalf so we can get it posted quickly tomorrow. Okay, if you want to add that in. Yeah, what, did, what did you say it was? That, what's the name of that? You're going to sign the public hearing warrant? Well, I'm sorry. Uh, instead, right now, the public hearing warrant, if the public hearing has your signatures on it, would you have right. to sign yeah. on your behalf? Yeah. The town manager will sign, the, we give the permission for the town manager to sign the public hearing warrant, right? That'll work. Well, public hearing notice, yeah, Warren. Okay, got it. Ready? That's a Go ahead. I move to schedule a public hearing on an emergency ordinance to temporarily relax various licensing, land use, sidewalk, parking, and traffic standards contained in the Code of the Town of Wells to assist businesses suffering from economic loss as a result of COVID-19 in a manner consistent with the governor's executive orders and reopening plan. <laughs> and further um, have the town manager be able to um, sign the public hearing warrant notice. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero again, thank you. Next time is discussion and action on accepting the town of Wells internal pandemic policy. John. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, uh, our HR director hopefully is on, uh, Marcy. I am. Hi, Marcy. Hi. The pandemic uh, internal policy is a policy that most businesses uh, and communities have. It is a document that 
talks about what the employee's rights are and the employer's rights are in uh, following through on uh, illnesses and work conditions and um, how, how we are to treat each instance uh, of a COVID-19 uh, problem that may arise. Uh, I'll ask Marcy to kind of uh, give a little better overview than that, but uh, it's, it's pretty much a, an employer-employee uh, document that talks about um, what we should be doing in a COVID-19 situation. Oh. Yeah, hi everyone, good evening. Um, so the policy in general, the, it, it, it's hopefully going to be used to provide guidelines and consi consistency across all departments. It would include, or it does include, the draft includes um, how employees would return to work after a potential infection, um, quarantine, um, different things like that. It also provides guidelines for use by the by the town by all staff um, for limiting the transmission in the workplace outlines leave entitlements in conjunction with the families first coronavirus response act and employees accrued leave this this has been reviewed by our town attorney uh, by the law firm and um, we Presented to the board as an internal policy. Can, Go ahead, Kath. Yeah, I have a question. On the last page, um, you have the qualifying reasons for leave related to COVID 19, and it's um, one, and, and they're all COVID related all the way down through except number six experiencing any other substantially similar conditions specified by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, but it doesn't say due to related COVID. Um, reasons. I think so those those guidelines I took um, Kathy right from the CDC's website and I think because they're changing so rapidly they have that kind of other section there uh, but those were taken go ahead I'm sorry I just would be more comfortable if it said um, due to related COVID reasons at, on the under number six also okay because this is what it's for, a pandemic for COVID-19. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so you, you want it to say, <coughs> you want it to be more specific to the COVID-19. Right. Just on the end where it says, in experiencing any other substantially similar conditions specified by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and it, then at the end it should say due to related COVID-19 reasons, or due to okay. COVID-19 related reasons, just like all the others. Okay. I just think it leaves an open door otherwise. Okay. Got it. Thank Any you. Any other questions? You're welcome. Well, would that change, Kathy? I'll take a motion. I make a motion that we accept the pandemic policy um, with the uh, amended words. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye, zero. Thank you. Next item is discussion and action on extending the main purse to the public safety dispatchers as of July 1, 2020. John. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, about three weeks ago, we approved the uh, police contract for this coming year, for the next three years. In it, it allows for the public safety dispatchers to join main purse under the 2C plan that is similar to what the other uh, employees of public safety uh, enjoy. And the uh, reason we, we've done that is that the uh, legislation was changed recently to allow dispatchers to join that, mm -hmm. that, that program. So it is a resolution that uh, Marcy has put together using main first language and uh, is in front of you tonight. Questions from the board? No. 
I move to authorize the signing of the main PERS agreement to include the public safety dispatches in the 2C plan effective July 1st, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero again, thank you. Next is discussion and action on reestablishing the Wells Lodging Facility Advisory Committee and its updated charge. John. Earlier this evening, we had a workshop that talked about um, uh, reestablishing the uh, Lodging uh, Facility Advisory Committee um, to take on the two questions that the board um, wanted it to uh, review. One was on the time of use that uh, uh, seasonal cottages, lodging should uh, open up and close down, um, which would require a town meeting vote. Um, and second, what we should be doing, if anything, in the regulations of short-term rentals. Questions from the board? So I think we should, um, in looking at the structure, I like what we had proposed earlier um, with having a hotel motel representative, uh, um, a short-term rental representative, campground and um, seasonal um, three season park uh, representative. So that way we can have equal representation across all of our diverse lodging um, availabilities here in Wells. Okay. Do you do you want when I make the motion? Do you want those specifically named in that group? Is it necessary? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 that's what I'm asking. Quite purpose of the designated lodging represent representatives. You should so state. You want, okay? So you want those four categories, right? If everyone else is in agreement that that's that's what we should be doing. I, I, I think it's the best move. I like it. Okay. I agree. Okay. I move to reestablish the Wells Lodging Facility Advisory Committee and its update charge and to seek interested committee members uh, and to include under the lodging industry one seasoned person, a hotel um, or motel representative, an air. B and B representative and a campground representative. I second if we amend just to say short term rentals that way it's not specific to Airbnb. Okay, short term rentals. Just to be clear. Yeah, I second that. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero again, thank you. Next to discussion and updates uh in action on updates, personnel and committee assignments, resignations and issues. There's nothing under the town manager of the selectmen tonight. We have next is discussion and action on accepting donations and bequests. The first being donation from Bob Sullivan, Director of Operations from Rowing America in Sanford for acrylic partitions at the town hall. And, and library. And library. Very generous. Thanks, Bob. I move that we accept the generous donation and write a letter of thanks to the donor. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero, thank you. Next is discussion and action on approving the minutes of the May 12th, 2020 selections meeting. Corrections, additions, or changes need to be made. No, we're fine. I move for approval of the May 12th, 2020 selections meeting minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero, thank you, Cindy. Once again, another great job. On to new business. Uh, for the second time this evening, we are open to the public. Certainly, I'm sure you have a couple of new questions. Yes, we do. Okay. Um, first question. If a renter at a seasonal cottage does not show compliance with the 14-day quarantine, what can be done to address this? Should we call the police or the cottage community management team? I, I would call the police, but also make management aware of it. Next question. The present civil state of emergency was extended by Governor Mills to June 11 yesterday. Wouldn't that make expired car registrations not due until July 11? It, it would have if she didn't do a separate order on that. Okay. 
Um, next question, what dates do hotels open? Uh, June, June 1st, they can take reservations uh, for, for uh, lodging guests. When will mini golf places and go-kart places be able to open? I like where this person's mind's at. <laughs> uh, I, my guess is uh, go-karts and mini golf can open now. Um, when will public restrooms be open? I don't know. Um, what has been the impact to small business during this time? How many Wells businesses have had to close their doors? Uh, I'm taking the question permanently closed, go out of business, yep. not reopen. Yep. Correct. Uh, I'm not aware of any uh, functioning business uh, doing that. There may be one or two seasonal uh, businesses that may not reopen, uh, but I'm not aware of main pet Main Pest Supply had marked uh, that they're permanently closed now. Um, their Wells branch, their Elliott location is still open, if I'm not mistaken. Is that the one on 109? Yeah. Yes. Um, sort of on that same note, with the expected loss from business closures and extreme downturn in tourism, has the town projected the financial shortfall in cash and what won't get paid or deprioritized? We are internally reviewing that uh, question and the data uh, points uh, that was mentioned in that. Uh, we meet as a department head uh, group weekly and we are um, aware of, of that uh, possible situation of the loss of revenues. Uh, we know that uh, the state revenue streams that we receive, such as re revenue sharing, uh, road reimbursement, um, other items like that uh, will be uh, near projection or less than projection that uh, we have put into our FY21 budget. We know that um, uh, the real estate market is still pretty hot right now. Uh, it's amazing how many permits were being issued uh, for new construction. Uh, so it is a difficult uh, uh, model to create. We are looking at it. Uh, we have safeguards put in place as we go into FY21 to see how the economy in the first quarter will do um, and, and discuss with the Board of Selectmen if necessary to amend budgets to, um, to deal with the situation as we uh, move forward. Um, next question, do seasonal campers for five months out of the year have to pay both lodging and property taxes? Yes. Um, next question. I am an essential employee who works for Wells at least six months out of the year, sometimes nine. I'm not allowed to be in my seasonal site until June 1st, so I made other arrangements. But now my question is, could I have gotten into my seasonal place when it was supposed to open? My husband works for the town as well. You really need to call and and talk about that situation with with, with myself or um, with someone uh, that your husband works with, so uh, the, form, uh, the supervisor or department head, so that we can uh, get a better understanding of what what it is. Um, do we have information as to the total? COVID-19 cases, deaths, recoveries, and active cases in the town of Wells? That information is not provided uh, by the state. 
they do it on a uh, county by county basis and then um, uh, by a statewide basis. Is there a COVID-19 FAQ document or section on the Town of Wells website? And if so, where? There is, uh, but I, I have to again indicate that when we put it up, it's out of date. You really need to go to the state CDC, the main CDC page, because they keep a current a uh, document that is updated almost every uh, two days. And uh, so what is on our website is accurate to the date that it was posted. And unfortunately, we cannot keep up with all of the changes that continue to be made, such as today's announcement on campgrounds. Will we know about the possible change in the quarantine before June 1st? Um, unfortunately, one of the failures of communication is that we are one of 492 municipalities that rely on what the governor uh, determines on a daily briefing basis. And we do not know uh, those answers uh, at this time. Moving on to some non-COVID-19 related questions. Can the town install more bike racks close to the beach since the trolleys won't be running this year? Yes, uh, uh, Public Works is purchasing more uh, bike racks and we are uh, looking at ways we can install them safely at the right of way, um, as well as the major beach entrances. Will the st substation be staffed full time? No. It is a station meant to for the call firefighters that um, are currently at the um, High Pine Station and um, for the branch station, we we're going to keep the branch station open, but um, it is a cent more central location for the fire substation. We will be closing the High Pine Station over time and um, it will be for the call firefighters to respond with, with the trucks from that location. Will there be an open house at the new police and fire station? Uh, we're at this time looking at the fall, hoping that uh, with the relaxation of the COVID um, group size, that we can um, uh, do a better job than if we were trying to do it right now. When is Swamp John Road going to get graded? Uh, Swamp John Road being graded, uh, we will be grading that as um, often as we can. We don't own a grading uh, machine. We have to hire it out. So when we do hire it out, we do the other gravel roads in town at the same time. Um, what we are hoping, uh, and I'll put a plug in for the town meeting vote on a, a bond issue that will do Swamp John, a complete uh, reconstruction of Swamp John with all the drainage that is needed, um, as well as replacement of the Drake's Island Bridge, um, three seawall repairs or replacements, and the Pine Lake uh, Robinson Road uh, work. Um, is there a process or form to submit for essential workers, a nurse, staying at a campground before June 1st? The, the thing that uh, essential workers need to do, even the question before, is to go to the campground and explain that you're an essential worker 
or a worker for the uh, town of Wells and find out what their uh, issues are with you moving in. If they need a letter from the town or something in that vein, uh, it is really up to them to open the door to you staying there. Um, two questions about the lodging committee. Um, how do we apply? And if there is an application, when will that be posted to the Town of Wells website? The application is a volunteer application that you can get from the website. Just mark it the uh, uh, lodging facility advisory committee. I'm just doing one final look through, but I believe that's everything unless anyone from the board? Uh, yeah, I did see else? one interesting one uh, procedure question asked why we aren't reading comments and why we're just asking questions. All comments on both the, the Facebook Live and the Zoom chat are being retained in our records for Freedom of Access Act um, requirements. Correct me if I'm wrong, Leah or John. And we're just answering the questions because those have a response that we can give to them right now. Um, all these public comments and questions are all being retained as public records. So, and everyone can see it. Um, when you're posting it. So it's out to the public there. I saw a really good question from a lady named Mary from her five-year-old son that uh, said, if there's no sitting on the beach, can he still build sandcastles? And I would uh, say to him that construction was deemed essential. He's all set, good to go. <laughs> I think uh, there's a couple, and I think we got to ask them. They're not easy questions, and it probably opens the door to things. but. Uh, why is the fire department not responding to medical calls? It's my understanding that the EMS director and fire chief don't agree on this. The fire department is fully prepared with PPE to respond. Why are they not responding? Well, go ahead, John. Oh, go ahead, Chief. No, that's one of the things that um, in the past, uh, Jim and I were talking about, um, and there was some discussion about taking us off of just the um, breathing calls or the difficulty breathing calls. And we were gonna be looking into changing that as we move forward. And that was to reduce the amount of um, exposure to uh, the uh, firefighters. However, um, we have no problem with uh, responding and being on standby um, and doing that. So we could, we could continue, we could ramp that up um, at any time now, I think so that um, we could be responding to those calls and be available. Jim, do you have any comment? No. So was there another question? Uh, Chief, just a clarification, not on that, on another thing is, um, how many call firefighters are there? We have um, eight, I believe, at the moment. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? I do want to clarify one thing on earlier question on the lifeguards. I did misspeak. I wanted to make sure that uh, that was clarified. They're going to be available nine to four. I think I said five by accident. So they're going to be um, working weekends, doing walks on the beaches from nine to four, Saturday, Sunday, obviously this coming Monday, but after that it'll be weekends until the 4th of July. So my apology if I misspoke. One more, sorry. Leah, I know you and I kind of texted about this. Do we have a real answer on short-term rentals? Are they not allowed to quarantine a short-term term rental? Are we, I know there was some a lot of confusion with the statement by the governor and then Okay, so I actually have, uh, that was one of the questions that um, Commissioner um, Heather Johnson had weighed in on, and on the lodging piece, because there was quite a bit of confusion about that. And if your question, Tim, is whether or not they have to quarantine elsewhere before they can go to any of the lodgings, as defined in the governor's orders, a short-term rental being one of them, she actually clarified for me, and I was surprised that um, the intention is is that in June that that is the case that they cannot 
use the short-term rental or the lodging as a place of quarantine. It, they have to quarantine somewhere else and then go to the lodging. That was more restrictive than I had originally thought, but that is directly from the mouth of the director of, you know, the commissioner of DECD. So, so it has to be a personal residence? Where they're quarantining? Uh, yeah. Not be, what I do know is, is that it cannot be in one of those lodging. Um, okay. Uh, let me just say, there is one, it, there is that exception. Am I on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, the one exception to that, and I know that she has uh, said this, I think, in emails to individual folks, is that, for example, if a camp um, ground, an RV park, is the only place that folks, only that's their, that's their seasonal resident and they don't have another place to go, that they can go there but they must quarantine and do all the things that John had mentioned when in quarantine. Huh. Kind of a weird stipulation, because the way I read that is if you have you know, a house, you can quarantine there, and then you can go to a lodging facility, but why would you go to a lodging facility if you already have a house? It basically just, it, yeah. creates, a, it creates a like quandary that can't be solved there, or doesn't yeah. need to be solved. It's helpful. What she indicated is, is the logic there is that a lot of folks who come and who, you know, have a seasonal home and they say they want to support lodging facilities in the state. And so that is what the logic was with that language of, you know, main resident and those who have quarantined for the requisite 14 days. So that's yeah. hopefully that makes sense. Staycations. Can, uh, thank you, Leah, by the way. Um, Chief, can, or whoever, can we change, if the sign does say lifeguards 10 to 5, can we make sure that gets changed? If there's a sign on Wells Beach saying lifeguards are here from 10 to 5, we shouldn't have that sign. It should be the 9 to 4 or whatever we're going to do. You know what I mean? Sure. I, I, well, I wasn't aware if there were any signs out on the beach right now. I don't know if there are either. I'm, I mean, I haven't been down looking, but somebody's saying they are. So can we just check into that and make sure that doesn't stay we'll, there or we we'll just do. change the times? Yep, we'll take care of that. And we were just going around from the parking lots this, uh, this week, and there are a few signs that need to be changed for uh, some of the things that you guys change and uh, lifeguards and, and things like that. So uh, we, have, we are looking into it to getting them remade. Question for the whole board. Um, and John, I know you're probably getting excited that retirement date is coming up soon. So I think it's time that we uh, reopen our application process and re review process of candidates so that way we can get moving forward since you know we've been on hold for a couple months here from that so i think it's time to get back into that process yeah john and i have talked about that john we're we're, we're gearing more towards maybe the middle of june and getting started than lining up the, app the applicants to interview awesome thank you i think we should really look at it just because you're going to have to make the i mean those people that applied you could have over half of those ones that we liked or even more already have jobs or, you know what I mean? Are not willing to move now or whatever. I think we got to really, really certainly different couple. circumstances that the positions right, exactly. open now. I think we got to relook really at the whole thing. I don't think we can just say, I personally think we redo it. But. Right. I think it's a whole different climate out there right now. Yeah, we honor any applicants that have already applied and still want that application to stand, but I think it, we proactively reach out to them to, to make sure that is the case. Marcy, are you still on? Yes, I'm sorry. You were, I had to mute it. I didn't um, hear the question. No. We need to look into our applicants for a town manager to make sure that the final that we had talked about are still available and interested and if not then you'll have to get back to us as to what options are available to us to proceed forward yeah I, i've actually been in contact with them a number number of times over the last couple of months and they, they are they're definitely still interested all of them glad to hear good yep. yeah. so are, so are we can we start schedule you want to start scheduling those or you want to we had talked about uh, possibly uh, the middle of June once we get through this uh, next okay. week and see, see where things are at. Okay, got it. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from the boards? 
Oh, yes, I do. On that, are we gonna are we gonna advertise anymore? Or we're just gonna go with whatever we have because there might have been some changes in them. I personally would love to advertise one more time, but yeah, I would also. I, I just, yeah, I, I think that would be the better idea if Marcy could do that at least and, and get us in, in case there's some because you know there's been a lot of turnover for a lot of different things. That's fine. That, that pushes us out a little bit. We have to, she's going to have to re-advertise, give them time to respond, and then we're probably not going to be able to march quickly. Do you think we could set interviews if we go back up? Okay, so so we'll still interview the ones that we had already picked, though, right? And then yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. I'll, I'll do that in the morning. Okay. So, I mean, we could interview uh, what we have, you know, and then the second round of interviews could be any new applicants. So we could structure right. it that way. So that way we're still meeting a, a fairly quick timeline. Yep. Okay. That'll work. Right. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Well, since we're still open to the public, I, I thought uh, we'd be a bit remiss that between now and our next meeting, next Monday is Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a usual situation with the COVID-19 there's not going to be a parade or any ceremonies uh, at this point in time. I feel that it doesn't diminish the day from the people that uh, have paid the ultimate sacrifice. And we all should be appreciative of everything we have because of those folks. And also for the, the men and women that are, that are currently serving and that are veterans, they deserve our appreciation and thanks as well. But maybe uh, next Tuesday we can say something else, but, uh, it's not just a three-day weekend. It's it's memorializing those that have paid the ultimate price, uh, and we we should at least recognize that. Chairman, um, again, I'd like to express my thanks to the Elk Club who took the flags that the town bought and decorated the grave sites of the veterans at Ocean View and Pine Hill Cemetery. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Next is the town manager's report, John. Uh, I have none. That was a smart, smart message that you sent right there. <laughs> I have one other thing before we move for adjournment. Um, okay. We launched our official website for Project Stimulus uh, today, this afternoon. Emily created a website. She spent countless hours creating this new website. Um, I will post the link in the comments, but it is Project Stimulus Wells M E dot weebly w e e b l y dot com and uh tomorrow we should be launching our uh donation and ticket purchasing um on that website um in coordination with uh, the historical society um we partnered with them in order to uh, accept donations on on our behalf um so we should be launching that tomorrow that is the hope if not it will definitely be by the end of the week so we're very happy we can start selling tickets uh, for the raffle, we have tons and tons of baskets. I think we have over 75 baskets now and live auction items um, for June 18th Facebook Live event. For anyone that can't participate in a, in, on a Facebook form, um, we are going to be uh, releasing some details on how you can uh, participate in a non-virtual way for the basket raffle um, portion, and we'll be releasing those details soon as we uh, get that plan finalized. John, correct me if I'm wrong. You'd love to have individuals also do baskets, right? The businesses Absolutely. have done a great job. I know, um, like the Forbes family did a, a basket. They're just a family now. They don't own businesses. Uh, the Tufts family. I know there's some families, but it'd be great to have more families do some kind of cool baskets. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, it's great when we have the businesses participating because that gets their foot in the door. Um, and we can start promoting them and it gets them to be a participant in the event. But the more money we can raise externally from these businesses, the more we can give back to them. So best case scenario is we have tons of uh, community baskets. Um, and if you would like more information about that, um, please feel free to email me. My email is seanroach13 at gmail.com um, or find me on Facebook. Um, I'd be happy to, to talk to you about it because we, we love when we get um, community baskets and we've gotten tons of them. So I've been very pleased with the results from this so far and I really think it's gonna be a great event. John, I just want to say, if this is the painting, I'm going to donate. Oh, awesome. I yeah. think that will be popular for the live auction. Yeah, thank you. This is, that's the painting I'm going to donate, John. <laughs> <laughs>
Is that a Mickey Mantle plaque that you're donating? I'm not donating a Mickey Mantle plaque. Yeah, I, you heard it here first, folks. He's donating a Mickey Mantle signed plaque. No, oh, no, no. I gotta keep that one. Sorry. <laughs> if nothing else, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I make a motion. We adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you. Good night. Thank stay you. well. Good stay night. safe. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>